actually win the first game, you get that confidence, you can actually take another one as well. But if you lose the first one, suddenly you start realizing you're playing against the best team in the world. Exactly. We are in the picks and bands. Let's see what homework these teams have done. I think so much, as you said, is going to be about those early games because SKT also improves and adapts throughout the series. They're able to kind of feel out what kind of strategy you're trying to do. And unless you have about 10 different strategies you can pick from that can beat SKT, it's going to get harder and harder and harder for you as they adapt, as they shift in the picks and bands. Let's see if Misfits can find one strategy that can actually beat SKT, the first pick and band phase here. The Janna being banned obviously prompts the Lulu ban on the other side, and I think Misfits are very happy regarding this because if they can get Ignar away from just a pure shielding support, they tend to be a lot more happy. They want to have him on some sort of engage. We've seen the Thresh, we've seen the Blitzcrank, he can play Tarek as well. I think this is actually better for Misfits than SKT specifically. Yeah, and you can see how much they're trying to take them off the traditional high priority Arden supports. Even the Rakan ban coming through, yeah. which is often left up, and you do end up in those Tarek versus Rakan type matchups. I do think that Tarek will be very strong here, and I like the first draft round for Misfits quite a lot. I think Jarvan works so well with Tarek because it gives you an easy use case for the ultimate. You're going forward, you have that guaranteed engage, and you can also pair up very well with the Bastion for that additional stun. Exactly, and now the normal Arden Sensor answer would be a Karma. Now this Trundle here, you might think this is top lane Trundle already, but it can be flexed down to support, and you right. can still go Arden Sensor on Trundle support with the Stone Horn as your keystone. We can talk more about that in-game. So that actually is a fine answer for Wolf against this Terra. And actually some really fast picks coming here for SKT, putting that pressure on Misfits a little bit as they get all their champions in. We're already in the second phase. I do have to say, though, I am a little bit worried already for Misfits with the Galio on SKT's side. The Galio has been so ridiculously effective in this tournament. 75% win rate at Worlds. And when you talk about, okay, well, how do you give Misfits a game? They smash you in the early game. It's full out aggression. What stops full out aggression? What roams across the map and yeah. answers those sort of plays very well? Well, it's the Galio. Yeah. It's also exceptionally hard to pick on and gank in the mid lane because of the wave clear, because of the tankiness. So that is a worry that I have already. I 100% agree with that one. I never like to see Galio go through the ban phase. Rice is a pick Power Beeble likes to take against the Galio specifically. Uh, one of the reasons is obviously the laning phase is not an issue for the Rise, and then you can actually use your ulti to try and go to side lanes and you can then match a Galio side lane pressure and you can actually be the first one to make the play as well and you can create picks with the Rise specifically and if it's left open, he might go towards it, even though it's been a very unsuccessful pick doing worlds. Yeah, and it certainly does have the ability to, to be successful, especially in these early skirmishes, if you are going out to the side lanes. But I always have a concern of a rise versus a tank heavy team. And you already have this super beefy front line being picked up. And when you don't have backline access from your mid laner, you know, as this rise, you have to use this line skill shot of your Q to get most of your damage out. And it's all blocked up by this super tanky front line you often are not putting out the kind of pressure you need to, but... Okay. A pretty aggressive team from Misfits here. Really just that Yasuo of aggression from Alfari, but he brings in the Rumble, only having okay. played tanks here at Worlds. It's Caitlyn as well coming in now from SKT. They did not show AD carry in the first phase. They lost the two main late game carries. They like to pick for Bang, and he goes over to Caitlyn. It's not with the Janna, who is sitting there and just perma pushing the lane 24-7, right. but Trundle is still more than fine down in this bot lane here to still play this... Very aggressive early laning from Caitlyn. And it still could be a more traditional support, but it is going to be that flex pick trundle support. Jace up in the top side into the rumble. That's somewhere where there might be a lot of jungle attention because it is this carry versus carry matchup. Uh, but, you know, it's very clearly a focus on the early team fights for Misfits with the Terek, with the rumble ultimate, using J4 to actually set up that equalizer very well. But I think that SKT are going to have some very strong lanes and going to be able to kind of withstand that perhaps already with the Galio. You have a pushing bot lane with the advantage of Caitlyn. You have advent advantages on the top side as well. I think that's why Power Beaver is saying, you know what? Screw it. I don't care about late game. I need something early game that can try and snowball my team here. Yep. Goes for this rise pick. We have to remember that Galio could still swap the top, which is where it's sitting at the moment. And you put the Jace mid. We saw Xiao Hu early in the tournament take the Jace specifically against the rise in that mid lane. So SKT have that option still. Yeah, and building into something like the Adaptive Helm as well as the Abyssal Mask on the Galio into the Rumble matchup can make it very hard for Rumble to really kind of push those advantages. And Rumble is a pushing champion if you're going to be push in, but not relevant as they have a swap out there. So will be Galio mid as is the more standard. And I think 
works better in general because of the access to both of the side lanes. Also gives a very strong top lane for both teams to actually play around. Uh, it's not the standard tank v tank up there. Both junglers can definitely start paying attention towards it. Even though SKT's strategy has actually been leave Huni alone. He's on an island and then you play around bot side with all your vision. When you have a Jace against the Rumble, you got to respect that enemy jungler can show up and kill your Jace. So we should see some attention towards it from both sides. Seeing that attention, we have the Jarvan on the side of Maxlord definitely having a little early game potential. Where does he find this for Misfits? Where is the best place to go? I mean, I certainly think that you can get over to those side lanes. It depends on where pressure is. But, you know, for Power of Evil and Maxlord, I think there's a lot of onus for them to go as this team you know, up to the side lanes, try to get something done. I do think that if Huni is pushing on Jace, he could be susceptible, and that's somewhere yeah. we can see them try to make a three-man play. All right, about to be onto the rift. Our second quarterfinal matchup almost underway. SK Telecom T1 versus Misfits Gaming from Challenger to World Stage. Trying to make an impact on the league scene here. And the team is more than ready with social media tweets and confidence. <laughs> And, and ready I, to win. I'd say they've already made their impact, right? They've made their mark on this tournament. This team has had such incredible improvement throughout the year and really has uh, shown that they're not to be underestimated. And it's been, again, a fantastic year after they joined in the spring split, qualified through Challenger. The team went to Korea to boot camp for a full month. They picked up Kakao. They found Power Beaver as well. And then, of course, they had Hansama. They had Alfari and Igna already. Spring's play was okay for Misfits. They made it into playoffs. They couldn't make it all the way to the final. Ended up swapping out the jungler. Maxwell came in as a big shock hole, the big leader. And while it took some time for them during the summer split to really reach their level, they made it all the way to the final. And then now they made it all the way to the quarterfinal at Worlds as well. And they've, they've been underestimated the entire way. No one actually predicted Misfits to be the team who could sit here and now challenge H2K or SKT. That was a little bit of European in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the biggest thing for me now is seeing can they go that next step, right? Because in that finals, when they made it against G2, against this top quality team who had time to prepare, they were handled very well. It was a 3-0 for G2. And now going up against an even stronger team who has had time to study, who has had time to prepare. Can you challenge this team? Question of, well, if Max Lohr can keep his jungle pathing different from game to game, is SKT a team that very good at utilizing their subs from Easy Hoon to Faker and now in the jungle, Peanut and Blank back and forth. They do it constantly from season to season. And both junglers starting, looks like they'll be on opposite sides then. So very important to track both of them, especially Max Lowe going buff to buff here. Once he hits level three, might try and look for an early gank, but he of course needs a little bit more before he can actually do it. Yeah, there, there is a possibility, you know, if you can actually push in bot lane, reset that, that you can gank someone like a Trundle. The Trundle is not tanky at all in the early stages of the game. Does have trouble escaping from some of these ganks if you can land something like the flash stun from Ignar. And Ignar actually going with a very kind of aggressive melee trading style. Thinking Grass the Undying is certainly atypical, but it, I think it's an adjustment because specifically of this matchup against another melee champion where you can actually get use out of your passive and having the Grasp is going to make your trades that much better. And the Caitlyn is going to be a big question here because Caitlyn came into play because she could dominate the bot lane. She could deal with these Relic Shield AD carries and these supports like Lulu Janet that could never punish her and she could just slowly take your tower. Against the Tarek there, he's actually set up to, you know, CC her and trade against the bang. Dazzle almost taking him down, full explosive shot. And it looks like they're going to lose this damage trade. Wolf still going in a bit, but they say stop and we'll go back again once we can. Yeah, I mean, nice nice little bit of damage coming out at the start on Bank. You also have to respect how much damage Trundle is doing back to you with the auto attack reset, with Chomp reducing your AD and giving the bonus damage as well. Trundle's early damage, if you just jump on his face like that, is actually tremendous, and it's a trade of two summoners. And Ignar didn't really get a lot of value out of his exhaust here in the fight. He's not yep. running heal on the Tarek and then barrier on Hansama. They've just gone back to the traditional style before Worlds, where Hansama is bringing heal for himself, but obviously, Ignore here, he's looking at this comp from SKT and he's seeing two physical damage dealers as the main damage carries on SKT's side. And there's going to be a lot of armor stacking on Maxwell's side. There's going to be Ignore trying to do the same and then shut down the Caitlyn or the Jace with exhaust in team fights. It's also worth mentioning, we haven't touched on it yet, but this is a Stoneborn packed Trundle. So this is for Art and Sensor. And one of the things about that is you're exceptionally squishy. So you are playing a melee champion and Trundle sometimes can have trouble contributing much if you cannot actually get up in your opponent's face. You have the pillar, you have your ultimate, but past that, you really are not contributing a lot. 
uh, with these really squishy yeah. builds if you're going to go for the Art and Sensor and Redemption. It is the pillar build, basically. All you do is you land your pillar, that applies to Stoneborn here, so when people are hitting the champion that got CC'd, they get healing back from the Earth and Rune that it, of course, puts on as a little debuff. And then you get the Art and Sensor proc for yourself. Faker, though, he's moved to the top lane. Relieving a little pressure, taking that blast oh, cone Alfari as well. Oh, Alfari there. Great timing, his Max Lord just left. Alfari overheating to use his Scrap Shield to get out of position. Talk comes in after the flash. They get turret side, and they're going to get first blood. It's those kind of plays here that can shut down Misfits early game. We keep talking about what is Max Lord going to do? Can he get a lane ahead? Well, this wasn't even about the junglers. This was just Faker pushing out his lane, moving to the top lane, and surprising Alfari up there. Yeah, grabbing the early boots on that first base makes it easier for him to get up there and not really any way for Fowler to actually escape once Faker is already behind him. There's so much CC there. Huni securing the kills, flashing behind him and knocking him back in. And this is just a really nice roam uh, from Faker. See, I mean, at this point, yeah, there's no vision of him, but it normally gets called very early when the mid laner just kind of walks out of your lane and Fowler is just not expecting Faker to show up top lane. And it's a very easy first spot here for SKT, and it's so important for them that they stop this early snowball from Misfits. One of the biggest concerns as well for Alfari now is you are on this pushing champion. You don't have your flash available. You know, within the next few minutes, Peanut could be up there. He could be looking for a gank, and when he hits level six, what about you right bring now? Up Faker and Peanut very easily here too with that Galio roam. So that's another level that they're going to have to be worried about. So now Max Law also have to struggle when it go when it means or when it goes towards the top side because yeah. suddenly Galio ulti is there. You might lose that 2v2. Max Law and Power View might have to change their attention to the bottom side where they have to set up from this Terek here against potentially Wolf on this trunk line. See if you can actually get some damage on this bot lane tower. Maybe a kill as well and snowball that way. Well, Alfari's build being shortened a little bit as he goes for two cloth armors to start. The Equalizer is going to be more of a slow when they actually get it into these fights. 47 to 29 in CS. As the top lane may not even see that much more love as Huni will have control of the lane. Pressure a bit towards mid, but it's just to make sure somebody has vision. And it looks like SKT wants to actually invade for the, the respawning red buff. Huni is not even purchased yet, though. Mm -hmm. So he's he's not that strong yet, but he is with the team. They have the Galio ultimate, and that is giving them the confidence to actually look for a play here. Alfari is six, though, and in the jungle corridors, we know how strong Rumble can be. Oh, they're pinging. They want to fight here. Or making a move. Huni doesn't like the situation as Alfari moves down from the bot side. Remember, Huni's flash was used in the last engage. Faker tries to come in, and they are going to be able to protect each other for just a moment. Maxlor finds himself going down as Peanut routes around the back of the fight. It's the issue for Misfits when it comes to playing around the top side. You have to respect the Galio ulti and also the damage that you get early game from a Galio and even a Jace. Despite him not buying, he's still level 6 and the base damage hurts. Misfits lose that trade and now down two kills already. Very low Han Sama trying to trade with Wolf a bit, but Bang gets the better of Ignar's HP. Wolf will just kind of sustain up here in lane if they don't trade too much. And they still have a bit of control. And we talk so much about Misfits trying to get ahead in the early game. They got to do something now. Bang's flash now down. They might be able to get the kill on the Wolf. His Bang barriers out to get any protection for him. And Han Sama done. went down without getting the heal off. And yep. that is so big because that's one auto away from getting a kill on Wolf. The flash now down from all of the bot lane, from the mid laner as well. No flashes are available across the board for Misfits, and the early game really not going the way they hoped. All going horribly wrong for Misfits. That crucial first game where you're trying to show you can actually beat them early yep. on, that you can get some of that confidence, momentum for yourself. Let's see this one more time. This is the trade, and Ansama just... Oh, and he even flashed there. Yeah. He's just not understanding how much damage was coming through with the Peacemaker coming through, with that guaranteed crit headshot yep. coming through. He had to early heal, and he tried to flash forward and actually land the stun, but wasn't able to get it going, and unfortunately, they are now way behind. And you can't make those kind of mistakes against SKT. Like, nope. we already know that you need to play almost the perfect game to beat them. Maxwell's getting caught. They have the jungle to themselves now. It is going to be Ignar trying to come back, though. Han Sama has returned to lane, and you have Power of Evil just in the side. Realm Warp comes in. Peanut and Wolf are going to be in a bad spot as Bang just inching into the fight. They lose Wolf, and it looks like Faker's going to be short on the help as well. Atar comes in to stop Han Sama in his tracks and possibly put him down. Peanut thinking about going back in as Bang can trade more damage from the bot side, and Faker staves off another kill. They may want it, though. Winds of War just short from hitting Han Sama. 
and they're gonna back off from this. Misfits do get a kill, they push them out of the jungle, so something over working for them uh, could give them a little bit of confidence, but we'll see if they can get any more. SKT did get some vision down in the jungle, and Galio Ultimate is almost back up, so they're gonna have to pay the respect over to Faker. All right, one kill back here, still Misfits Gaming. If enough to start, they were looking for. Right now, almost down 2,000 gold. The Caitlyn in the bot lane, just farming, oh. not getting any damage on the tower, but not getting shut down either. Power of Evil. Can't do what he can in mid lane, but it's so hard against the Galio. It certainly is, and SKT wanted to go for this aggressive early invade, but you know the Rise ultimates that you had talked about earlier actually did come very heavily into play because SKT is making this move without Galio ultimate being up. So despite the fact that they get a lot of damage down early, the Rise roam comes in first. Yeah, and also we have Bang right now returning from base. Just uh, an over-aggressive play here from yep. SKT, making a mistake on their side. Just getting punished for it instantly. I'm Sam, hoping you get a second kill on the way out. But because of Fager's uh, early taunt here, catches the Tristana instantly and blocks any incoming damage. Good for Power of Evil as Fager was able to get an early roam, get that kill in. One almost delivered to Power of Evil there. and not sure that's going to happen very much more as SKT play a little bit safer in those uh, engages. It's also a little bit concerning when you're looking up at the top lane for Alfari because so much you talk about Rumble, getting early spell penetration, being able to get this level two ultimate and being super powerful around that timing. And that's really when Rumble does reign supreme. But because he's been put behind, he's yeah. into this kind of full on defensive build, likely building towards the Seekers now. And with Seekers and Tabbies, your damage is a lot lower. You do still have the base damage working up for you, but spell penetration really is an important part of Rumble. Rumble has become basically a snowball pick, as you're highlighting, because we know in the late game, there'll be redemption, there'll be these huge locket shields, and they're just gonna block most of his ulti damage. Yep. So if he's not doing well in the mid game, in the upcoming team fights we're going to have in the next 10 to 15 minutes, the pick kind of has no place all of a sudden. But all their flex picks from SKT in this pick and ban phase really put Misfits in a tough spot, because they were looking at a Galio and a Trundle being, okay, they can both actually go top lane, one can go support, one can go mid lane, and then they lock in this rumble, and suddenly Jace comes in as a top lane surprise, and oh, now they're diving. Oh, going for the dive. Faker knows he can come in. Alfari tries to get just away from the turret, dodging out on the top, but knocked back in, and Faker picks up kill number two. Even Roams again, back up to the top lane here from Faker, and you talked about how SKT has not been playing from Huni. They've been letting him be alone by himself in a side lane, making his plays, but this game, they are putting him ahead, and they're showing that they can play all of these different styles. They know down the bot lane that Bang and Wolf just wants to survive. They know it as a winning lane, top lane, they can try and utilize. And it's this Galio pick. Azale, you set this in the pick and ban phase, giving Galio over to a team like SKT. It's so scary. And Faker right now, he's part of everything. Yeah, and I mean, not only just the defensive capabilities, but obviously how aggressively you can make this. This is diving into a rumble. Unfortunately, the early equalizer not really paying dividends there for Alfari is Cooney's kind of just jumping out of it. I don't think there's any escaping this play. Exactly. The first gank was just Faker walking to top lane. The second one now is like, well, I pushed my lane. I've ulted to basically go to the top lane again. And we say we say scary. We say, but why? Why is Galio so scary? And then in the hands of SKT. Because Galio is such a stable pick. It's a tank that has strong wave clear. It's a tank that has super high early game impact, a lot of crowd control. You can not only control your lane, through your wave push, you can then move to the side lanes. You have this easy response. Anytime the team wants to do something on the map, you press R. You can shut that down. Anytime you want to do something aggressive on the map, you simply press R and set it up. So really, in the early game, I just think that Galio reigns supreme. Also worth adding for the late game fights, he has a massive AoE taunt, which is so valuable because you have these backline carries you want to protect and Galio can do that so well or you can catch the enemy. Let's see what happens here. Ansama going aggressive again. Teleport's coming in from the top side. Don't even know if they need it. Ace in the hole tries to get hit. Cosmic Radiance comes down. And There's four like here. They're going to go for the dive. For now. Says Juaniel dodged out on one. Ansama gets taken down. His Faker now 3-0-1. Five kills on the board for SKT. You thought Faker needed his ulti to help the silence? <laughs> Has a teleport as well. Why not? He's straight down into the bottom lane. Misfits are trying to be aggressive in the side lanes, and Galio punishes them again. And this is just another problem with Ryze in these early stages. Yes, Ryze can be strong in these skirmishes, but how can yeah. he ever get to them when he's constantly pushed in by this Galio, when he's not able to actually access these side lanes, and when he's forced into the cleanse versus the teleport? So really, things going so well for SKT in the early game, and 
with these item completions coming through, it's just bad news goes to worse. I mean, Huni already has a tier and a full black cleaver, and it's going to be crushing this item. Faker gets caught. I don't know if he's going to be able to make it out of this. It looks good as he just walks down. Huni says, yeah, we can walk out of this, and Alfari gets pulled out of lane. As they start to rotate back, it's going to be Han Sama up there. Yeah, I mean, there's three men hitting Faker, but where's the damage, right? Yeah, it's exactly. mostly magic damage coming through from Power of Evil, and this guy's already on his Mercury Treads, already has the Adaptive Helm. And Galio has so much innate damage reduction through the passive, through the taunt passive when you're channeling it as well, that you need so much more to ever be able to threaten them. We are only 15 minutes into the first game of this series, and the SKT War Machine is steamrolling over Misfits. This is not how it's supposed to go for Misfits if they want to do anything in this best of five against SK Telecom. And right now, it's an uphill battle. They need to find some opening, but they're not winning any of the lanes. Yeah, and, and it's really problematic because, as you talked about, this is not the way that Misfits are supposed to have these games go, right? It's all about their early game strength. We've talked a lot about that. We haven't talked a lot about how SKT wins even when they are behind. They're three and one from behind this tournament, and now they have a big lead. Ah, That's so they must so lose when they get ahead. That's <laughs> the strategy. There we go. There you go. That's how it works. Locking down this one. Peanut able to get that movement off. Zone him out with that e six from Sejuani, and they're able to get themselves into position. This now gives that 4,000 gold lead to SKT. And you can see what the average gold difference here between the two teams is in that group stage. Exactly. Misfits typically are ahead around the 15, 20 minute mark, but then can still lose. Let's see what happens here. Power Reaper, Max Lore. Bang feeling good as Faker comes in. Shots onto Max Lore. Looks like they'll keep the focus even if Cosmic Radiance comes down. They turn onto Alpha. Right, no damage from the Equalizer comes in as Bang goes over the wall to take the 1v1. And Han Sama and the rest of the team turn tied. They have to leave Alfari. Eight to one, SKT, 16 minutes in. There's just no damage there for the Misfits. Faker comes in with the ultimate again, shutting them down completely. They get three kills. They're going to get the Rift Herald. They're pushing multiple lanes here as well. Jace will likely be able to knock down the mid turret. They can get the top turret and even use that Rift Herald to threaten a tier two. It's like Misfits getting so desperate, they just Took whatever fight they could actually find, but SKT were ready. Every single member was there, reacting in time. And they get more kills, more towers. 8,000 gold lead. It also catapults them ahead once they start to have these vision, these towers. You have Jace able to take them down very fast. Bang as well can do that from a safe distance very quickly. And you have a huge front line to stand in front of you if you even do feel trouble. 31.7 to 24.1. It's a really good point. I mean, Jace in those side lanes with the W, giving you all those extra attacks. Yeah. You are knocking down these hurts so incredibly fast. And we saw how Huni could perform in side lanes you know, against Cloud9, knocking down turrets. If he ever gets time, he's going to be a menace. And here's the fight again. As you said, it does feel like Misfits just are trying to force anything. Yeah, they were just so desperate here. Power Weevil jumping in with Maxwell before the dual lane was there, before Fire could even TP in. Doomed before the fight even started after Misfits called for that engage. And SKT pick up a bunch of easy kills on the way out. Definitely believe you guys are right. Misfits giving a lot of consideration to always going. We see it from Han Sama in the bot lane. Those summoners are up. The rocket jump is forward. Ignar's there with Cosmic Radiance, as, as well as Max Lore. They're behind so much gold, still trying to just take that blue. Get a little bit back, and they're getting in trouble for it. And Han Sama, you know, speak a little bit about him as he may be caught out here. Ooh, let's have Ignar for a moment, but Baker's going to take quite a while to go down. And at this point, it's enough time for the team to get there and make it another SKT fight. Yeah, Han Sama has just been such an aggressive player throughout the tournament. He's actually second in forward percentage, meaning time spent across half, essentially. Only second to iBoy, who's now no longer yeah. with us. So he has has really been playing this aggressive play style and making it work for himself yeah. throughout the tournament. But it's so tough when you're playing against players as strong as SKT and when they're on a Caitlyn. I mean, you put Bang on this lane dominant champion and the Trundle is a solid matchup into Tarek and then it becomes extremely difficult. And we have before this game here during the group stage, SKT picked up nine kills before 15 minutes in the six games they played in total. So they were very inactive. They picked scaling lanes. They allowed yeah. the enemy teams to push them down and forced SKT to kind of defend for a while before getting that big late game team fight. In a game like this here, where Faker and Huni are able to get a huge advantage top lane so early and then switch it down to bot lane right after, 
they're never going to be behind. They're never going to have to defend. They can just play full-on aggression. And that kind of stuff is Hooney's bread and butter. We see him playing the tanks, and it's all here and there, not getting much resource here. Faker to his lane first. Faker to Hooney. Hooney 2 0 3. Baker's 304. Those side lanes are so huge and already hitting on the inhibitors. Sub 20 minutes. He's just gonna kill the inhibitor or dive. Oh, that's the ultimate coming in for Peanut, but Alfari doesn't look like he's gonna make it much farther. Booney standing on the equalizer has to get out. Shock blast just on the coattails of Alfari as Rift Herald is taking down mid. There is so much on Misfit's plate and they don't know what to go for first. I mean, this is just complete dominance from SKT, almost knocking down the inhibitor turret as that Rift Herald is pushing mid. They knock down the tier two. They put damage on the mid inhibitor as well. And this game just feels like it's completely out of control. 10,000 gold lead before 20 minutes. And it's hard to see a world in which any team comes back from this, yep. let alone Misfits against SKT. Oh, for sure. Misfits late game, definitely been an issue doing well. So doing even the EU LCS where they have struggled that part of the game, which is of course why we keep talking about them getting early leads if they want to win this series here. But for now, there's going to be five players on your screen. There's going to be a coach backstage all thinking about next game. What do we need to change here? Okay, Gallio, that was a huge issue. We couldn't yeah. deal with it. All the flex picks were an issue as well for Misfits, and they got to change something up already for the next game. And to me, it's it's about having those aggressive lanes, those winning lanes. You talk about Ignara as a playmaker, and while Tarek is a great pick, that's much more of a late game, a team fight style, or even a mid game team fight style. It's not this Blitzcrank or this Thresh who's gonna be the playmaker and really be explosive in lane. But we'll have to see what they can make happen here as the Baron is on the map and SKT has full side lane control. Uh, they're gonna have to be very careful or Hooney's gonna be knocking down their inhibitor. It's really crazy to think of the SKT power, the history they've created for themselves in a very strong team, a team that can come back. Just in the group stage, they were also down 10,000 gold, but it wasn't they're out of this game. It was a Rakan Ori ultimate. Here for Misfits, it's hard to find in this composition. It's hard to even see coming from the beginning of the game. Will they be able to make anything work now? And Koma has talked about the fact that, that SKT uses group stage yeah. to scout out other teams, to figure out what their weaknesses are, and then they look to improve upon them, right? They're identifying weaknesses. They're drafting Mordor's early game already in this first game here against Misfits. And you know, for all the criticism that they have gotten about their early game, look at what they are showing us so far. And it's not the first time we've seen them have issues in group stages. Like, think back to... Every uh, year is the weakest year. Mark. Every year we're like, oh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm seeing a weakness right there. They're bleeding at the moment. There, there's a chance, maybe. Obviously, with Misfits, not a lot of people were looking at them being the big giant slayers here. No people thought at least Misfits could challenge in the first game, and not been the case here. That mentality is still there for Misfits. We see them trying, we see them getting themselves the into death positions rush. that could make things work. 22 minutes in, Misfits get a fight right on to Bang on the backside. Han Sama jumps forward, but he's blocked out by Cataclysm as Cosmic Radiance comes down along with Baker, and Bang's on the backside, able to deliver in just a few shots. And Han Sama's in the ground. Power of Evil, the rest of the team trying to realm warp out. He makes it along with Max Lord, but Alfari left in the back, taunted up and taken down by SKT. Once again, we see Misfits try and see if they can maybe pull off a trap or creative play to get something back here, but they just do not have the damage or the members there in time to actually kill Bang. And Igna, he's still alive, uh, buying a bit of time for himself. But the rest of SKT, they're starting Baron. Yeah, they're already on Baron. You can see Faker is pushing in the waves in mid and in bot, getting more damage down on those turrets. Oh. And Wolf is even going to claim a kill for himself here, adding insult to injury. Gets him on the pillar, throws down the subjugate. Baron falls, it goes to SKT, and a kill for Wolf coming up at some point if the team doesn't make it here off home guards first. Oh, Peanut's going to steal it. Oh, he's trying to Don't get take it, it away from him. <laughs> He'll secure ah, Hooney. The unexpected shot blast. All right, now it's time to see how fast can SAT close this one out. 13,000 gold lead and the Baron buff. All their items are coming in with the yeah. completions. There's nothing really to threaten them, and they're just going to look to push in here, and we'll see how quickly can they end the game. Bang looking to pick up the resources on the side of Misfits as well. They don't even own their half of the jungle. And they only have one more turret on the top side before it is back to those inhibitor turrets. Two Mountain Drakes along with this Caitlyn Jace comp as well. It is just adding insult to injury here. 11 to 1. Just under 25 minutes for SKT as they look at Misfits base. Waiting for Huni to push that bottom lane at the moment. Also waiting for the wave to hit the tower up in top lane. Get all the outer turrets out of the way. 
then you just gotta break open at least one lane at a time. There's a tower in the bot lane here, that in here that's very low. A few hits from Huni and it's down, and he can start going for in here. Misfits might look to try and kill Huni. I think you have to force. Misfits' only chance is forcing something 5v3, 5v1 even. <laughs> Try to kill Huni off immediately, but already Huni's on retreat. Going Dazzle up to that Cataclysm as well. Doesn't look like you're gonna get much out of Equalizers. Huni's into a safe spot. Good ult from Peanut as they lock down their first target. That's Max Lore. Han Sama falls quickly right after, and it looks like Baker is not gonna let this one end until they get to the fountain. The rest of SKT's inside the base, and Ignar's the next in their eyes right after Power of Evil. The first inhibitor will fall. SKT just wanted another fight so they could win that fight, push all the way for the Nexus. Don't need to spend time getting an all the inhib, just finish the game. Looking at 25 minutes for the first matchup here. Afari's doing what he can, going for broke. But SKT's already got that for themselves. 16 to 1, 25 minutes in. Game one to SKT over Misfits. And almost a perfect game there. Only the one kill given over. No turrets, no dragons, nothing happening for Misfits. So now, if you're Misfits, it's a full reset. Completely ignore this game even happened, but still look at the gal you picked from this draft and say, okay, this was a huge issue. They could not play against Vegas Galio. He was part of all the early kills we saw in this game here. And after that, you also got to talk about nerfs. We saw suddenly people dying without using heal, something we haven't seen during the group stages. We saw Faker go missing and no one seemed to call it. A lot of issues right there from Misfits. They got to fix that completely for game two if they want to do anything. I mean, it's such a next level of pressure when you're on this massive stage in a best of five against the best team of all time. Knowing these guys' reputation it's got to put a little bit of fear into you. Oh, for sure. I mean, SKT are very nervous. <laughs> when you think about those, you're talking about not calling the the bat or calling the Mias and whatnot when Faker was gone. That was his first back. You know, you only think he's back. You don't think to say he's going to leave lane. So it's the very small things that should be considered. Those second nature things. You come into every game. They're out of lane. They got to be gone. You're exactly right. And it's scary to see that Misfits is kind of fumbling on those right off the bat. I mean, you have to do everything right against SKT to stand a chance, and I'd love to see Misfits go for full early game, get Ignar on a playmaker, no see Galio. if he can make something happen, get rid of the Galio, get a Blitz, get a Thresh, get something, and try to make some early plays. I think everybody agrees on the Galio. We'll check in with the analyst as that game one and how that game one played out as we send it over. And thank you very much, Rich. Deficio hit the nail on the head. The nerves getting to SKT there, dropping a single kill in yeah. their first game in this best of five series. But in all reality, that Ooh. was a crushing, crushing game out of SK Telecom to open the series. But for Misfits, a lot of questions around the strategy that they brought in here for game one. Yeah, so the one thing at the very end is the rise pick was exactly what SKT wanted to play against, so you can itemize more efficiently on the early game Galio, which is like just the final uh, nail in the coffin to what I think was a pretty disastrous draft. Yeah, there were other parts to it as well, Jets. Specifically, when Misfits fully committed to Tarek and J4 in the first round, the Trundle pick we saw from SKT, it was a true flex. Back when we had Tarek in the meta, Trundle was a good matchup into it. It's a very safe one there. So already they have flex picks. They have the Galio as a second round pick in the first round of the draft. I know that's confusing, but they already had the Sejuani locked in. In general, I feel like SK Telecom outpicked. And a small point here and what I kind of took away was people will say that SK Telecom's early game was weak in groups. And it's true, but they weren't picking for early game. So it's a kind of a... It's a subtle point, but SK Telecom were not playing a strong early game, but they weren't picking for it either. It's not that SK Telecom can't play early game. We know they can, and this is the sort of game where you see those adjustments, and suddenly the results, it was hard to watch. I mean, it was really just a question of intention versus a bad read on the meta, which we normally would never say about SKT. They've certainly proven themselves, but I have to agree. I mean, I'm never one of those people that says, you know, that 100% a team just absolutely lost a draft, but there's nothing that they can do here. I just don't fundamentally really believe in that. I think there's always options, except for this game. I look at this, I'm like, this was 100% lost from the draft phase. It wasn't just the Galio, it wasn't just the Tarek, it wasn't just the Rise. Like, it was all three of those things in, in conjunction. And why aren't we playing Lucian into Galio? The LPL, it's the go-to pick. It was an option here for Power of Evil. Like, I understand- He's played it before. I understand the beauty of like having hard CC and Jarvan. You're just like, let's camp Faker's lane. Oh God, we can't kill him. He's on Galio. And we yeah. saw the 
the potency of this Galio pick throughout the early game, right? The potential to roam to the side lanes and affect the map while Misfits is trying to make plays. And we'll take a look at the early action as it played out in this game, brought to you by Acer Predator. Now, the reason that Faker actually gets the jump up here, and this is seconds before Maxlar has gone, is because he teleports back to the lane. So it's the TP that saves in the extra seconds where Power of Evil isn't into the lane, shoves the wave, and then wanders top. Yeah, that gank also forced the Rumble into a defensive build, which had more implications later down the road. Then once you're level six on Galio, especially when you're trying to make plays around the mid lane, it just gives you such an advantage that SKT was able to capitalize on. I mean, it's basically three winning lanes for SKT. We already saw Sejuani in these games. When you actually are able to move aggressively on Sejuani, the action rotates around you. It was a bloodbath early, and there really was no escape. And quickly touching back to that top lane point about Rumble then having to itemize defensively, I think that was a huge blow to Misfits. Because again, you go back to draft, what are their options? Where can they gank lanes? It was really only around that Rumble and that Jarvan combo to get the 2v2 kill pressure top. Once that wasn't available, they were done. Yeah, and I want to speak to those gold leads that we see on the screen. Nearly 10,000 gold at 20 minutes. You could say EDG level early games from SKT, but they're so much of a different team and so much more complete. And when we were thinking about like upset potential coming into this series, we're thinking, well, Longju was the favorites. They had a great group stage and they lost, but we should be thinking about group stage to bracket stage in this words of Samsung and SKT being very similar teams that can adapt to the meta and still have all those late game fundamentals on lockdown. SKT has been a better version of Samsung the whole year. So if we're going to say Samsung is now favored in this meta, SKT's on a whole nother level. Well, that's what speaks to me, right? You talk about building a 9K lead similar to the way that EDG was able to do that. Well, you pair that with SKT's ability to close, and it's no surprise that with a 10K gold lead, they, are, they close it in just five minutes more. I mean, multiple carries here are doubling the gold earned by the opponents. It felt over at draft, but of course, you play out a certain strategy a certain way, things can go in, but very quickly, it escalates. Then since we've identified draft as being probably the major issue here, yeah. I want to talk about where the adjustments can be found for game two in Misfits. Yeah, so I think SKT was a favorable draft, but like you put the teams with different compositions, there's still a good chance SKT wins that game. Like, yes, Misfits had a low chance with that draft, but SKT can still win even with bad drafts as we saw in the yes. group stage. Going into the next game, uh, I want to see a total redo for Misfits. They got, I think, completely surprised that SKT was trying to go early game, and that almost forced them, like, they were ready to be like, all right, we're going to be proactive in the early game. It's like, well, now we have the scaling comp, so it's not really a favorable play to do so. So uh, I think they will be less surprised by the draft from SKT and need to think about picking optimally. I think if they get into an early game's arms race, they're going to end up losing late to SKT. They just need to try and make sure that they're getting the best value out of their picks. For me, it's a uh, focus on Ignar. I think Deficio mentioned it a couple times during the, ca or the cast, but I do agree. Get him on a more playmaking-oriented champion. He was doing good things with the Taric, but it wasn't really enough. And I still feel that Bang and Wolf are, are kind of the area, if you just throw Maxlor down there with Ignar and get Han Salmon going, that it's probably going to be the best case of success for them. And we'll see if they change up sides. SK Telecom picked blue just like Longju did yesterday, which was a surprise for Longju. They couldn't carry it through. SK Telecom certainly could. I didn't like Misfits focusing on the supports on red side. When you ban Janna on blue, you do draw the Lulu ban, but going for Rakan as well, sure it's denying a playmaker, but by then, it felt like SK Telecom almost had a blind pick draft with what ended up. I can confirm for you that Misfits has chosen blue side. There will be no substitutions here for game yeah. two. Let's see what that does to this discussion. And this conversation, I don't actually think it does much. It just means that if they want to pick in a similar style of SKT, they can. They can save their AD carry until second phase to try and get a counter pick. But what SKT did to Misfits ment mentally in that game is an example of how hard it is to play against SKT. Yeah. Because you know they're so great at playing defense and that they will outscale you if given the chance. So then you think, okay, we have to pick early game champions. But if all you do is go all in early game against SKT, they're going to beat you with scaling. But they just beat you with early game. So they so quickly destroy you mentally, and it makes it feel like you don't have any options. They, so I don't know what Misfits is going to do. They put you in what feels like a no-win situation, exactly. right? And so you're kind of grasping at straws for how exactly can we find a hole in, you know, in the play style and strategies of the best team in the world. And so, again, I think that's where we always fall back on that. Well, well, then you just have to index early. You have to hope that you find yourself that 10K goalie to 20 minutes that will become insurmountable or gives you enough allowances to make mistakes and yet still close the game. You just turn the nameplates off, frankly, and you just go back to playing Misfits, like what made their fans fall in love with them over yep. the group stage, which is like the Blitzcrank stuff. You just go ham, you go crazy, you go wild. I think 
set up a playmaker, set up a lane you can gank or a jungler that can warp the sense of the game because as SKT controls tempo, they win. All right, well, there you have it. We've got game two of SKT versus Misfits coming up right after the break. Before we go, sometimes you have a rough start on the rift. Sometimes the camp on your lane is more like a long-term lease. And while you can't always control how the early game plays out, you can control how it affects you. Take a note from the first Blood King Yankos as he shows us what it means.